I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Tell me, how can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget no ever? Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. It's necessary for the salvation is necessary. Amen. So let us pray uh, that the Lord will continue to save. We pray for our Bible study on tonight that something we said and done to encourage us, to inspire, inspire our hearts. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Are there any particular other prayer requests? Hey, glory. So I have been praying, you know, for my sister-in-law and, you know, my brother, my oldest brother, you know, he basically said he just broke down and I ain't never heard him say nothing like that. Um, may I've seen him break down two times in my life. And for him to say that, you know, really pricked my spirit. And the Lord said, because I want a relationship yeah. with them. My Lord. And so he Here said, Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Lord, have mercy. You yeah. know? Yeah. And so um, he called me on yesterday and he was like, They took my wife down um, about six o'clock yesterday morning we to Pittsburgh and they immediately started working on her. Um, <laughs> and so he said, He had told me he was on his way. And, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging and saying, The Lord is going to. You know, make a way. So today, it was like the Lord like pushed me, like, tell him. Hello. And so I said, you know, I said, God got this thing all worked out. I said, but he wants to hear from you. Yeah. I said, he wants a relationship with you. Right. He said, well, since I've been praying, I said, yeah, I said, I want a relationship with you. you know, yes. Sometimes we don't understand how he's doing it, but he's seeking a relationship with him and his yeah. You know, it's one thing you want to go to God like Santa Claus. Right. You just get what you want to live on and do whatever else you want to do. But God is looking for sincere intimacy. He's looking for relationship. And God made me just begin to tell him my sister is a little bit more bolder <laughs> in her witnessing approach. And I try to just, you know, encourage and point them to the way of the Lord. But he said, no, this time you just tell him. And so I did, and I pray that the Lord sincerely draw them yes. with the cords of his love, that they answer, because he's drawing, but that they fully answer and 
fully commit to God uh, with this whole situation. You know, don't let them get hard-hearted or anything. But let them soften their hearts and come to the Lord. Pray for my son in a special way. Um, I got a phone call from him this morning. And he was saying, you know, some things were going on with him in the hospital. It's now going on for about four weeks. And he was saying some things was going on with him. And basically was saying, you know, come down and get them straight. <laughs> That's it. Oh, you know. So I said, let me get situated and I'll be down. And all while I was getting situated, I was praying to the Lord, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but you know. Right. I said, Lord, I don't want to have um, an aggressive spirit. I want to have your love, your gentleness, your weakness when I go. And so I said, Lord, you go before me and let your spirit rest upon me. Your blessings follow me. Yeah. You know, because we're supposed to be people that are peaceable. Yes. And so he was like, yeah. I told him I was going to talk to my mother and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh my God, you know, you don't tell him what else he hasn't seen. So when I got down there, I spoke to his nurse and, um, you know, she told me what was going on. And I said, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And so I went in his room and I spoke to him and I think he was kind of disappointed because I don't know what he thought I was about to come down here and do. Right. But I know you, you my child. I know you. Right. Right. And I know you down here clowning. Right. Here. Okay. And you ain't being nice because you ain't being nice to me. Mm. And I'm your mother. Yeah. So uh, I know what they're going through. Right. So I just told him, I said, you know, I came down to see about you. I said, and I want you to focus on getting better. Yes. I said, and I don't want you down here cussing at me. I went down. I said, I just want you to know that you need to focus on your healing and be kind as you can so that you can come on out of here. And I sat for a little bit more. Then I said, no, I'm going to leave. You have a good day. If you need me, you call me because I ain't going to couple blocks away. But pray for him because God is dealing with him and he's fighting God. Mm. You know, God is trying to get him to deal with his stuff. Yes. And he's pointing those fingers out at everybody else. But his fingers pointing back to him. You got to be true to thy own self. Right. You ordering food from places that you ain't got no business ordering food from. You in the hospital. Right. You're supposed to be eating what they tell you to eat. You're on restriction. You got, you're doing all kinds of stuff. So pray that the Lord will touch his mind to be obedient. And to be kind-hearted, and that the Lord will heal him. Pray for me in the house of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Let that's the church to stand. Thank you, Lord. And let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We just say thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon Brother Jamil, touch his mind, and his heart, his spirit. Touch him in the name of Jesus. Heal him and deliver him and set him free. We ask you, Lord, that you bless the condition and situation in Pittsburgh. We ask you to send forth your healing power. And, Lord, bring forth your word that they may have a relationship with you. That they may be saved, delivered, set free, ready when you come. And, Lord, we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you bless our Bible study on tonight. Send forth your word, send forth your anointing. Let your strength and your grace be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want you to uh, turn with us on tonight uh, to the book of James, to the book of St. James, uh, chapter 1. Chapter 1. The book of James, chapter 1. And uh, the direction. Lord wants us to go in on tonight is to uh, look at his word and uh, truly examine ourselves and to uh, apply that word to our daily living, our daily lives. Uh, God's word, uh, what I learned about uh, 
Israel and the word of God. God gave them his word so that they could live by it on a daily basis. He told them, I don't want my word to depart from your mouth. Meaning that the word depart from your mouth just simply means I don't want it to, you to cease from speaking my word. Uh, the Bible said that man shall not live by bread alone, yes, sir. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. And God gave them, gave them their, his word so that his word may dwell with them in their hearts, in their hearts. That same motive is with us on today. God wants his word to literally uh, dwell in our hearts. He literally wants his thoughts to become our thoughts. He wants us to forsake our thoughts. When the scripture says that every man forsake his way, and then it says the unrighteous man his thoughts, uh, the way you forsake your way is by forsaking your thoughts. And uh, because you, you do what you think, uh, what comes to your mind, that's what you do. And, and in order for you to forsake your way, you have to literally change up your thoughts. That's why Jesus, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Be uh, renewed in your mind. Amen? And, and the only way to renew your mind is to think soberly according to the scriptures. Amen? Amen? So that's what the book of James is about. The book of James is about daily living. Amen? And, and forsaking our way and seeking after the Lord. Performing the duties that are required of you in the body of Christ. So we see here, uh, it says, the book of James, chapter number one, uh, verse number one, it says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, then he says, greetings, amen? And uh, verse number two, he says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And right off the bat, right off the bat, uh, he's, he's telling us how we ought to live. Yes, sir. And uh, he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. He's literally reiterating what Jesus taught uh, when he taught um, in the book of St. Matthew. That when people revile you and persecute you, he says, rejoice and be what? Exceedingly glad. Exceedingly glad for what? Great is your, Great is your reward in heaven. In heaven. And, and what he's talking about, he says, count it all joy. This is, the, this is the demeanor that we should have when we encounter or fall into diverse temptations. Now. You have to realize that here he's not really talking about being tempted with sin. He talks about being tempted with sin later on in this chapter. Here he's talking about being tempted with daily living. Now, uh, 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 you know, your, 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 your light and gas bill may be due and you don't have all the money. Uh, that kind of stuff. Folk may be mistreating you and, 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 and cutting up on you. Uh, that kind of stuff. The stuff that you encounter on a daily basis. You know, you, you, you may not have everything that you desire, but you certainly got everything you need, but, 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 it, but it's pressing on you. It's pressing on you. You follow me? T uh, trials and tribulations uh, that go along with life. Amen? We have to live life down here. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to we have to live in an exemplary life down here. We can't let everything stress us out. That's what James is after. You can't let everything bother you when everything becomes a panic attack. Amen? Or somebody asks you a question, you snap it off at their head. You know, uh, this is what James is talking about when he says, count it all joy. He's saying when you face daily living situations, rejoice. 
you know, uh, 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 praise your God. Uh, uh, the Philippians, uh, uh, Paul, he said, you know, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, if there be any uh, uh, praise in it. Uh, he said, think on those things. So, so don't always walk around with a negative attitude. Amen. Don't be a Debbie Downer. Amen. Uh, always paranoid. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Look, look up. Uh, your redemption is drawing nigh. Uh, uh, be, be positive. That's what he's saying. So in order to do that, you got to rejoice. Look on, look on the bright side. Uh, 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 my, my, my one hand may be cut off, but I got another. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 I, I may, uh, my car may be broke down, but I can get on the EMTA. Thank you, Lord. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, look, look for the silver lining. Uh, don't, don't, don't look for, uh, 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 when you're going through life, don't be a sourpuss. Yeah. Amen. Don't be uh, uh, lemon squeezy. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm look, look, be happy. Uh, rejoice. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Rejoice. That's what he said. You know, when you're enduring uh, regular life kind of situations, he said rejoice. Uh, count it all joy. Uh, and you're not the only one going through. Uh, I'm saying somebody, like that song said, uh, somebody's worse off than you. Amen. Thank you. So be what? Be grateful. Amen. Be grateful. Amen. That's what he said. He said, count it all joy when you go through divers' temptations. Count it all joy when you fall into divers' Temptations And those temptations there, he's not talking about sin. You just shouldn't be uh, rejoicing because you're being tempted with sin. Amen? Thank you. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about daily, routine life situations that happen to you. Uh, rejoice! Uh, even when people talk about you, uh, persecute you, put your name out as evil. Uh, he says do what? Rejoice! Uh, and be what? Exceedingly glad, uh, for great is your reward in heaven. Now, and, uh, the way you can get a good rejoice in is living above what they're saying so that what they're saying is not the truth. Uh, that's when you can really rejoice. Amen? Uh, that, that you're living a lifestyle wherein it, 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 it exemplarizes it or it it's exemplary and it magnifies the Lord. Amen? Ain't that how we ought to live? Uh, let your light do what? Shine. That's what James is talking about. Let your light shine before men uh, that they may see what? Uh, see, see, see you doing good. See you rejoicing. Amen? See you rejoicing. Amen? See you rejoicing. Giving God thanks. Uh, when, when Jesus was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he didn't threaten. Don't go around threatening people. Amen. Uh, don't go around doing that. Uh, rejoice. Be exceedingly glad. Praise your God. Uh, uh, say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, 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 I thank you for counting me worthy uh, uh, to suffer for your name's sake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's the mindset that, uh, that, that James is after. So he says, my brethren, James chapter 1, verse 2, he said, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations. He says, with this knowledge, knowing this, that the trying of your faith is working patience within you. Amen. And that word patience there deals with endurance, yeah. uh, the, the ability to have self-control. To, to, and you know, a, a saint of God should always have uh, self-control. They should not go off, uh, as they say in the world, off the heat. You know, they should not should not go off the deep end. Yeah. Amen. Should always have some patience, uh, some self-control, some endurance. Thank you. Lord. Wait, wait for God to intervene. Wait for God to show up. Amen. Wait for God to make a move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's what he means by that. He said, that knowing this, but this knowledge, that, that when your faith is being tried, uh, 
God is working patience in you. Yes. And we know yes. through the scriptures it says, in your patience you possess what? Your soul. Your soul. Amen. Soul. God wants you to possess your soul. But what God literally, those two verses literally, it literally focuses on maturity. Amen. And growth. God wants us to grow. So he, he allows situations and, 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 and what we say, no harm things to come upon us. Uh, and we act all funny and get all upset and, and so that he can grow us. Amen. So that we can see ourselves. Uh, and, then, and then realize, Lord, I got to do better. Amen. That's what James is after. Us doing better. Uh, living a lifestyle and in, in accordance with the word of God so that we can do better. Amen. Amen. Be his servant. Be, be his representative. Amen. So he says, God, knowing this, you got to have this knowledge that the trying of your what? Faith. Your faith. That's, 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 that's what he's after. Uh, the devil's after your faith and God is after your faith. Amen. Uh, why? Because your faith is so important. The children of Israel died because they didn't count it all joy uh, when they were in the wilderness. They didn't rejoice when they were going through. They murmured and complained and lacked faith in God. Uh, hallelujah. We, we ought not be like that, right? Hallelujah. We ought to rejoice. Uh, give God thanks. Got a flat tire. Don't go and curse. Be cussing. Uh, 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 got a flat tire. Rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I, I could have been killed, uh, but but I'm alive. And thank God I got triple A. Thank God I got a spare. You know, rejoice. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Uh, look at life in in not in a negative sense uh, of, of woe is me, but look at life in in a sense that God is working some things out. God God has a plan. Uh, and, and these things happen. Amen? And, and, and I'm not going to allow these things to, to throw me off, get me all upset and angry, but I'm going to trust in God. Uh, I'm going to lean on Him. Amen? So he says, uh, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. But notice, verse number four. He says, but, that conjunction is, 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 is a three-letter word, but it means something. Huh? But but let patience have her what perfect work. So so you can't you can't uh, rejoice in the first minute and then start complaining in the next minute. Huh? You got to rejoice all the way through, huh? all the way through whatever you're going through. Huh? Now, now once again, we're not talking about being tempted with sin. Huh? You should be angry when you're being tempted with sin. Uh, uh, and I mean that. You should be upset. Uh, upset. Uh, realize that, that, that sin is trying to take you out. Uh, and the whole demeanor should change when you're dealing with sin. Uh, God, God never told you to rejoice when you're being tempted with sin and a sinful nature. Amen. It's totally different. Hallelujah. And, 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 and when you're being tempted with sin, uh, then your whole demeanor should change. Why? Because that ain't, that's not a laughing matter. That's not something rejoicing. Uh, sin is evil. Sin will take you out. Hallelujah. Sin is messy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So notice, he says, but let patience, your endurance, your ability to go through it, uh, have her perfect work. Rejoice all the way through it with a made-up mind. That, that I'm not going to let life situations hold me down. Uh, people die, don't they? Uh, your loved ones die, don't they? People close to you die, don't they? Thank you, Lord. But, but, but you know, and, and, and uh, we ought to rejoice and find something to give God thanks for in that situation. Not, not allowing it to, to wreak havoc in our lives, to change our, our testimony with God. Amen? And believe your God. Trust in your God. So he says, let patience have her perfect work that you may be what? Perfect. Complete. That's what I'm talking about. I said earlier that those first two verses deal with maturity. 
Amen. God is trying to grow us. Uh, we got to grow up. Thank you, Lord. We got we to gotta move on. What bothered you last month shouldn't bother you this month. Uh, let alone last year. Uh, you got to get through some stuff. Amen. Uh, press your way over some stuff. Uh, uh, look to the hills from whence cometh your help and know that all your help come from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Be exceedingly glad. Now notice. Thank you, Jesus. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That wanting nothing means without lack. Amen. Everything that you experience in life is orchestrated by God. Amen. Even the things that we do ourselves is orchestrated by God. Amen. In, in the respect of he, uh, he, he, it's his, it's his, not his perfect will, but his permissive will so he can work it for his good. Amen. He can work it for your good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when we, when we look at what God is saying, if you go through life rejoicing and, and being exceeding glad, and anytime the temptation is coming upon you, life, life events, amen, life happens, amen, hallelujah. He says, rejoice, uh, he said, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect, uh, mature in your mind, in your way of thinking, and entire, wanting what? Nothing. Nothing. Now, when he says perfect and entire, he means go through whatever you're going through so that it can bring you to an, a, a perfect entire state. Amen. It can bring you to a point wherein it, 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 it causes you to receive everything that God has for you while you're going through it. Amen. Everything that you go through is for a reason. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to look at whatever I'm in right now, God is trying to teach me something. Hallelujah. We've got to open up our hearts and our, and our minds so that we can receive what God is trying to teach us. What the Holy Ghost. Let's put it on the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is trying to teach us something. Amen. But everything. Hallelujah. Even down to your breakfast. God, he's trying to teach you something. Uh, when you walk out in, into the streets, into the, into, the, into the world, he's trying to teach you something. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so, so be prepared to learn. Amen? But be open. Hallelujah. Lord, say, Lord, teach me. Show me. Hallelujah. Show me the way. Hallelujah. My God, and when, when the Lord, when we take on that attitude, the Lord can reveal stuff to us. He can show stuff to us. That's how you become perfect and entire. Hallelujah. If you're open and receptive to what the Lord is trying to show you. Amen. Thank you. You've got to be open. Uh, you've got to be receptive. Can't be a know-it-all. Uh, got to receive instruction. you got to receive correction. Uh, you know, don't you? Uh, you got to receive that. Hallelujah. And be open to that. Amen. And even when folks criticize you, uh, there's some truth in the criticism. Uh, the, the, the person who's criticizing you, you may not like them. Uh, uh, they may not like you. But there's some truth in it. Uh, there's some truth in it. Uh, if, you, if you take the time and analyze what the bottom line is, there's some truth in it. So don't even discard that. Huh? Even when your enemy is cussing you out and telling you all. Oh, there's some truth in it. Huh? Listen. Pay attention. <laughs> I, I know y'all ain't receiving this. <laughs> but there's some truth in it. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But be open to how the Holy Ghost can lead you. That's how you become entitled. Right? Wanting nothing. No lack. See, the Holy Ghost knows what you need. Huh? The Holy Ghost even prays for what you need. And you don't know, you don't know if beforehand the Holy Ghost prayed that you'd be in that situation. Huh? Uh, he makes intercession for you. Huh? Thank you, Jesus, when, when, when he got baptized in the river Jordan, the Holy Ghost drove him into the wilderness. 
For what purpose? To be tempted. Huh? Now, the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth, but also to be tempted. Because huh? uh, he knows that you need this. Huh? He knows that you need this. Huh? So that's what kind of a knowledge you got to go on me. Uh, and, and, and if that situation is pushing all kind of buttons in your life, you needed that uh, to show you where you are uh, and, 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 and show you what you're dealing with with yourself uh, so you can get yourself together. <laughs> uh, you got to talk to your soul. Say, soul, we got to get it together. Uh, uh, and the Holy Ghost leads and guides uh, so you can get it together. Uh, not to destroy you, but to help you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So that's what that perfect and entire is representing. Hallelujah. Being led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit knows. The Holy Ghost knows. Uh, and you got to be open and receptive to, to, to what's being taught. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice what he said. He says, verse number four, he says, but let patience have her perfect work that you might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now note, verse number five. He says, if any, if any of you like what? Wisdom. wisdom. And that wisdom there is not, is not uh, some spiritual uh, uh, revelations. It's not talking about that. Wisdom deals with the skill to live life. Amen? Successful. A lot of us struggle with living life uh, successfully. Uh, struggle with getting along with our brothers and our sisters. Getting along with our enemies. Amen. Uh, uh, and even uh, uh, dealing with daily business. Amen. A lot of, this is what he's talking about. Down the earth stuff. Amen. He's not talking about you receiving the uh, knowledge that Jesus is the son of God. That, that, that you're receiving uh, salvation. He's talking about Daily wisdom to be in the ability to apply God's word to your daily life. Amen. People struggle with that. Amen. Amen. On a regular basis. Yes. Uh, how, they don't know how to resolve conflict no. uh, and issues. Married people don't know how to live marriedly. Uh, a lot of, lot of uh, 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 fathers don't know how to raise children. Yes. Mothers don't know how to raise children. You follow me? Huh? Thank you, Lord. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of areas in life. Uh, people don't know how to uh, 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 maneuver on their job, uh, to be able to work on their job. Uh, this is the kind of wisdom that he's talking about. He says, if any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask of God. If you don't know uh, how to go about and live a daily life, uh, to get along with your husband, to get along with your wife, to deal with your children, to work on your job, to pay your bills, to give tithes and offering, huh? to stay out of sin. <laughs> he said, let them ask of God. Huh? Uh, and, and God will help you. Huh? He said, you notice what he said. He said, if you lack that kind of wisdom, now notice, I'm not, he's not talking about, I'm going to reiterate that, uh, uh, spirituality. He's not talking about that. Deep revelation. Not talking about that. He's talking about daily functioning. Amen? Uh, so that we won't be dysfunctional. <laughs> uh, you come to the Lord broken, don't you? Uh, but, but you should, if you're dwelling with the Lord, you should be healed uh, uh, at some time. Uh, even your emotions, uh, they should be healed at one, some time. Amen? Even, even the things that you experienced in life. Uh, rejection. Uh, if you're walking with the Lord, there should be a healing process with that. Uh, uh, he's anointed to heal you. He sends his word to heal you. Uh, and the, the barrier block is that we don't accept the word. Uh, we don't accept the healing. Uh, it's, there for the, it's there for your deliverance. Uh, and, 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 and the wisdom of God. Uh, is he tells you how to deal with situations and, and you can pray to your blue in the face that God move a mountain for you but if he's giving you a strategy through his word until you fulfill his word that mountain won't move 
Huh? It won't burn. Huh? So you've got to uh, apply the word of God in the beginning. In the beginning of the Bible study, we said that God has given you his word to become your thoughts so that you can be put into action. Amen? So, 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 if God is giving you his word to put in your thoughts, huh, and if you're not putting it into action, then you won't get the deliverance that you're requiring or asking from God. Why? Because of a lack of obedience. But, but notice, he said the weapons of our warfare are what? But mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of strongholds and having readiness to avenge all disobedience when you're obedience. Huh? When you walk in obedience. Amen? To his word. Hallelujah. If you want to resolve issues, you got to go to the word. Get that wisdom out of the word on how to resolve issues. Amen? If you want to, if you want to uh, 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 get your finances straight, you got to go to that word to get your, to find out what God's wisdom is saying. If you want to have a good relationship with your husband or your wife, you got to go to that word. Amen. And find out what that word says to have a good relationship. If you want to have a good prayer life, you got to go to that word and find out what the word says and apply that. Hallelujah. First lady. Yeah. If you truly want to be delivered, you want the Lord to help you, you said you gotta apply that word. Right. And I remember, you know, coming up, I had, you know, coming up, you know, in my life, you know, just watching men do things to women that really bothered me. Yeah. And I always said I'd never let a man do such and such. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to get some victory after I got saved, you know, and a uh, big test came with my old daughter. She was there, you know, the mm -hmm. So, you know, I said, I had to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, you want me? Help me, Lord. And, you know, if you truly mean that, then you got to seek this word. Right. You know, find out what, what you got to do to get that. Right. And when she did pass, I asked her, I said, Lord, you help me. You know, I said, you fix me. And I asked the Lord, I said, and um, I asked him to come to the funeral. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people thought I was crazy. I'm like, no. You know, he's here for his daughter. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I said, but in order for if you want to fix me over things, you want to be delivered, you know, because the Lord had it, I had to get delivered from right. that situation. That situation. Absolutely. Then, you know, to let other people know when they came to me like, you want me, you want me to do it? I'm like, no. <laughs> I said, that's between him and the Lord. Pastors asked you that. Yeah, pastors. <laughs> like, <laughs> You want, you want him out here? I said, no, leave him alone. And I, you know, like I said, he without sin cast his first stone. There's a whole lot of you men right now in my face that did something to some woman or did something, you know, that you shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can't look down on people and, you know, and um, if they do something wrong, mm -hmm. we got to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, you help us. Right. You know, and... And if you want to, and for me to get the delivery, I had to, you know, seek God, and, and, and he helped me. Absolutely. To this day, he helped me. And the yeah. situation is that, that happened. And, you know, I'm like, Lord, you help me, because, you know, you want to, like, sometimes, you ain't got to get you, you want to go off. But I said, you know, greater is in he that's in me. Right. He is in the world. That's just the enemy. Right. You know, trying to stir something. Absolutely. I'm trying to get something stirred up in my said, but not so. Mm -hmm. Not so. And I, somebody said, well, give me her number. I said, no. It ain't even worth it. Right. You know, because, you know, the Lord will do what he got to do with that person. Absolutely. And it's for us to do what we got to do. Yes. For us to do what we got to do the right way. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what that next person that did. Absolutely. You better look what's, what's in it. What you that did, when you, you get that right. Mm -hmm. You see God get that deliverance. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. And, and you know, uh, when we uh, carry around a lot of, of resentment, bitterness, that stuff eat at you as does the Bible says, a canker. Amen? Which is cancer. Uh, it can cause that. Uh, that's why, you know, you've got to walk around in forgiveness. God, God says it. So you got to forgive 
huh? in order to receive forgiveness. That's a two-way street. You, if you want God to have mercy on you, you got to show more, show forth mercy. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, now, there's some things that people can do that you, that, 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 that. well, I can let that go. But what about the stuff you feel you can't let go? Uh, that's, that's what test is. That's where you got to count it all joy. Uh, 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 because you're going through it now. Uh, going through it now. Then found your weak spot. Your kryptonite. Uh, and then found you. Uh, so, so, so what do you do? Uh, you, you do what the scripture says. Uh, you forgive. You move on. You show mercy. Amen. Hey, vengeance belongs to the Lord. He said he will repent. Uh, uh, you got to put God's, you can't, we can't pick and choose which part of the word we're going to live. Uh, and what I'm going to shout off. Uh, thank you, Lord. And we can't pick and choose uh, 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 what, 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 what's, what's, what, what's uh, godly and what's ungodly in the word of God. All of God's word is God. Uh, and we got we to gotta uphold all the word of God's word. Even that which I don't like, I got to uphold. Uh, that which God ain't never asked us would be agreed with. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, so he just put it out there because he knows. Amen. Hallelujah. God is true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. What verse be in? He says, if any man, verse number five, he said, if any man lack wisdom, now that, like I said, that, that wisdom there is talking about daily living. This is the, the ability to live life skillfully, successfully. He says, let him do what? Ask of God. Where do you go? You go to God. You don't, you don't, you don't go to Oprah? Huh? You don't go to, uh, what's that other guy? Feel good? Dr. Feel good? Huh? You don't go ask your buddy, huh? You go to God. You don't ask any ungodly folk, huh? Go around getting all kind of opinions, huh? You go to God, huh? Notice what he said, that he give it to all men, what? Liberally, amen? Liberally, that means God, God gives it to you in abundance, in abundance. And he says, and upbraideth not, now he doesn't, you know, sometimes some people ask you a silly question and you get upset with them. Uh, when you ask God a silly question, he don't get upset with you. Uh, especially what, what James is after here is there's a lot of things we should already know. Uh, and sometimes we ask God stuff we already know. Uh, and, and, and God doesn't get upset with you because he knows you know the answer. Uh, and get mad with you and give you a smart answer. God got control. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. So, 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 so he has self-control where he doesn't get angry with you for asking him a question. Amen. Thank you. So ask God a question. Uh, even if you know the answer, ask him the question. Seek, seek God. Huh? Call him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. No sense in us, no sense in us, us uh, uh, saying we say and, and not acting like we say. Uh -huh. No sense in that. That's a hypocrite. Amen? Uh, uh, that's a hypocrite. And you're going to have hypocrites all around you. Amen? You can't control other people. Amen? Amen. You can control yourself. Uh, even when your child, I learned when even my children get a certain age, I can't control them. Uh, I try to influence them, uh, but, but they got their own mind. Uh, and they do some stuff I don't like. Amen? Stuff that they've been taught against. Hard taught against. Know it. Amen? But yet still want to do it. Uh, so, 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 so God is the same. Uh, God, God has taught us. Uh, and y'all know that God is against some stuff that we do. Uh, uh, but God puts up with us. Amen? He puts up with us. Let him. Oh, let me. Thank you. Put up with us. Puts up with us. Even, even, you know, uh, even uh, raising 
children in the church, raising children in the church, even as, as, as a pastor, raising children in the church. Uh, people got a tendency to look at the pastor's children in a different way because they're the pastor's children. But you got to think about it. They still got a carnal mind until they get saved. Huh? They can grow up around the word. They can uh, uh, be around the word. But if the word don't get in, they still carnal. And, and subject to the devil. Even though they come from a godly household. Just think about your own children. <laughs> there you, go. you You help raise your own children. Uh, and, and some of them get saved, some of them don't get saved. Uh, but they're influenced by the word. Amen? Uh, you, they talk the word, but they but if they don't choose to live by it, they call them on it. Uh, they're going to do evil. They're going to do wicked. Is it, is it acceptable? No, it's not acceptable. But it happens. Amen? So I'm just trying to show you. You know, as far as when you're looking at a uh, 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 pastor's children, uh, 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 elders' children, or, or saint children, uh, they if, if they're not saved, uh, they're going to cut up. That's the truth of the matter. Huh? We cut up if we're not saved. That's the truth of the matter. Amen? Sister. struggles. Amen. We all got struggles. Life is complicated. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's complicated. We all got struggles. And, and, and the word of the Lord says that, that if you're trying to live this life, uh, you got to renew your mind. You got to have God's thoughts. He said, I know the thoughts or the plans that I think towards you. And those, those thoughts, those plans are God's thoughts. And, and you've got to think according to to the word of God. That's where the transformation is. And that's where the wisdom is. Amen? Thank you, Lord. It says if you lack it, 
You can ask God. He'll give it to you. He won't get upset. But notice, here's the stipulation. Verse number six. What does it say? Now notice, you gotta add, your faith is everything. I said that earlier. Your faith is everything. You've got to come to God in faith. Amen? He that cometh to God must believe that he what? And that he's a rewarder uh, to them that diligently seek him. You've got to believe that God is. Amen? He is everything that you need. Uh, and there's nothing else beside him. Uh, and that you've got to believe that when you come to him to ask him, he will give it to you. Amen? God don't want you wishy-washy, double-minded. Amen? And then when he reveals it to you, receive it. You know, I'm going to say this, and this is just me talking right here. If, if he reveals it to you, and it's rubbing against all your flesh, you need to receive it the more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, receive it. Receive the word of the Lord. Amen? Uh, the people make shipwreck when they don't receive the word of the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Uh, Brother David? That's because our flesh never agrees. Never! It would never agree. So when God reveals something to us, we need to practice it, whether it hurt or not. Absolutely. You practice it until it becomes a part of you. Yeah. And then it don't run through the wrong way. It's yeah. a part of you. It, it, it causes you to produce. Yeah. As a whole, when you a lot of times when we don't have a victory, and God is trying to take us to that expected end that he has yes. for us, we don't want to go there because we are being rubbed by God's word, and our flesh don't like that. No. So what we need to do is, like you say, obey. Yes. You know, obey the word of God, whether you like it or not. You know it's right. Yes. You know you should obey God. You should do what's right. Yes. So you obey God's word until it becomes a part of you and start producing uh, uh, the word uh, uh, spiritual things in your life, the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there's going to be a rub. Yes. Huh? You got to expect the rub. Yes. Huh? That's, that's what it's all about. Yes. That's the trying of your faith. All right. Amen. All right. huh? that's, why, that's why it's being, it's working patience in you. Huh? I, I was going to say too, flesh never wants to bend because it don't want to be made. It's, it's enmity. Yeah. Flesh don't want to do what's right. No. It's going to always buck against buck the up. Yeah. So it, we call it rubbing, but you know, you got to get, so you say you just have to surrender. Yeah. You know, say that I, when, when we say that song, I give you all of me, I have to go. We have to really mean that. Right. You know, Absolutely. I, all of me, I'm surrendering everything to you. Yeah. You know, your will is concerning me, I will accept it, I will act on it. My Lord. <laughs> My Lord. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We say that. We say but, but, but when uh, when it happens, when it needs to happen, sometimes we act differently. Yeah. We gotta act the same. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. That should be our goal. Am I right? Yeah. Lord, help me to act the same all the time. Especially when it's rubbing up against me. It's smoothing me out. It's fire. <laughs> Purifying. Right. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. It's revealing some things in me. That's ugly. Uh, and that's that dross coming up to the top. Uh, and he's skimming it off. <laughs> Let him skim it off. Uh, through your obedience. Through your walking with him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Relationships is what it's all about. And, 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 and. A uh, marriage relationship, that's one of the hardest. Yeah. Amen? Why? Because you in it, you in it with somebody you know, you love somebody and they love you and, and, and you got to give yourself to them as Christ gave himself to the church. Amen? They got to humble and submit reverence. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that takes something. Amen? That takes something. But uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, harder relationships then that is our walk with the Lord. That's even harder for us. Amen? Uh, uh, Evangelist Erickson, she made mention in the prayer request, uh, like, we, are, we want God to be Christmas to us. Uh, but he's looking for relationship. 
Uh, give and take. Give and take. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? God will give you something, he'll take something. See how you go out. Did that with Job, didn't he? Huh? Job had a nice family. He had some nice cattle. Amen? Didn't he? And, and thought he had some nice friends. <laughs> huh? Thank you, Lord. Huh? Wife turned him back on. Huh? But God, Job kept his integrity, didn't he? Uh, and in the end, because he went through it, uh, I ain't gonna say he went through it in the right way, but at the end, he got he got the victory. And then God gave him double. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, God is like that. Uh, that's relationship. Huh? Uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Israel. Uh, uh, Jacob, thank you, that's my man. Thank you, Jacob. Huh? Jacob. He, he, he. God was telling him, "Huh? I want you to, 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 to go back to your homeland because he was with his, he was with his father-in-law." Yeah. And he said, "God, uh, if you do this for me, huh? Uh, then I'll serve you." <laughs> huh? That's what he said. <laughs> God didn't trip. Why? Because it's a relationship. Huh? God did it for him. Huh? And God served. Question is, what if he don't do it? <laughs> well, you still serve. Huh? And we got to have the simple saying, yeah! If you don't do it, Lord, I'll serve. Huh? Misha, check that. Let me go. Go on into the fiery furnace. He said, he, he said God is able but if he don't do it, yes. uh, he's still in relationship. Give and take. Uh, it's a relationship. Uh, we got to look at God, me being in a relationship with him. I'm in a relationship with Christ. Amen? And I know my position. Huh? I'm, uh, uh, he's Lord, I'm servant. Huh? Know your position. He's Lord, you're servant. Huh? And he'll bless you, huh? but he'll bless you as he sees fit. Relationship, that's the relationship. That's the contractual agreement. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. And, 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 and if he blesses me, I'm going to be satisfied. If it don't work out how I think it should work out, I'm still going to be what? Satisfied. Relationship. Am I right? Oh, hallelujah. Hey! God is trying to do us up. Hey! We have in our mind how we think it should be done. Yes. But God knows what's best for us. Yes. So we have to accept his way. Even though it's not the way we think it should be, yeah. God knows what's best. So we have to accept his way concerning us in order to be growing up. So when, when God starts doing things to us, it appears that he's doing things to us that's hurting us. But it's really to make us grow up. Yes. Like you mentioned about Job from the beginning. He didn't do it right, right. from the beginning. But as he went on, uh -huh. his mind began to change. Change! Because as you pray, as, as you pray and ask God to help you and to give you that mind, to have that relationship with him, things start fading out in your mind. Yeah. You start, I mean, when I say things, I mean worldly stuff. Yeah. You know, you start getting a closer uh, relationship with the Lord, and then he began to reveal things to you, and then you begin to accept his way and accept the way he's doing it to you and for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we can't go around thinking, well, I don't think it should be this way. I feel I shouldn't have to go through this. Mm. Oh, it's so embarrassing for me to do this. I went through a test one time and I, I was so embarrassed. Yes. You know, but I, I, I let the Lord know if you, if it's your will for me to live under a tent, uh -huh. uh, in a tent, 
because I was afraid they were going to take my house. Yeah, I remember that. And I said, if it's your will, uh -huh. I said, I know you gave me this house. Right. But if you decide to take it, let them take it back from me. Uh -huh. If it's your will for me to live under a bridge, under a cardboard box or a tent, I'm willing to do it. Come because on. I know that you're the God. You're the God. Yeah. You're the wise God. You know what's best. Yeah. And if it's if if I have to live in that cardboard box or in that tent under a bridge somewhere, that's to help me to grow up. Yeah. So I accept that, Lord. And yeah. when I when I came to when I surrendered like that and came to that decision in my mind, looked like God just broke everything. Broke everything. Everybody just backed off. Said, Come on, said, leave her alone. Come on. You know, and, and that's what we have to do. We have to come to a place in our life where we totally surrender. Yeah. A lot of times we think we'll surrender. Ah. I've been there. Yeah. A lot of times we think we'll surrender. We we have it. No. We go back and take it back and we wrestle. Yeah. But we gotta totally get it. Totally. You know how you know you haven't totally surrendered? It's a repeat. You go over it again. Exactly. Find yourself in the same situation again. Exactly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You're done. Yes, he will. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And that's power. You know, when we surrender our lifestyle to the Lord. Yeah. Huh? And he knows when we surrender. Exactly. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants. Yeah. So Amen. So he can show himself strong. So he can show himself mighty. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so when you humble yourself beneath his mighty hand, yeah. he can then exalt you. Yeah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. My God. All right. All right. Uh, we almost done. Notice, uh, he says, but let him do what? If, if you're going to ask God for some wisdom on how to live life successfully, let him ask in faith. Notice what he says, nothing wavering. Amen. He doesn't, uh, she mentioned, Mother Davis mentioned, taking it, giving it back, taking it, giving it back. That's wavering. God wants your mind made up. You're going to give it to him, let him have it. You're going to walk through it, walk through it. Huh? No, matter, no matter what comes your way. I just had an image of, uh, you know, when we was growing up, we were down there in Waterloo, and one of the scariest uh, things at that time growing up was Wacky Shack. You know, and then when you got into that car, images start coming at you, stuff start coming open at you. You know, but you got to stay in that car. <laughs> You know, don't get out uh, and go on through it. Uh, life comes at you. Situations come at you. It's wacky. Wacky stuff come at you. Stuff you don't like. Amen? Some stuff you do like. But you can't uh, 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 not abide in the ship. You got to be consistent with the Lord. Amen? Be what? Steadfast. Huh? Don't be wavering. Be steadfast. Uh, unmovable. Am I right? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't be stop, start, stop, start. Have you ever read a book? Uh, you read the first 10 chapters. You stopped it for a month. And then you try to pick it back up. Uh, and, read the, and read the end. You didn't forgot everything in the first 10 chapters. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. You got to be consistent. That's what God is looking at in our lives. Consistency. How many of y'all believe that today? Thank you, Jesus. Consistency. Notice what he said. Uh, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. Whoop, um, he said, verse 6. But let him ask of faith, not word wavering. For he that wavereth and is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Now, he's saying that he that, uh, for he that uh, wavering, the wavering is your thoughts. Yeah, I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, I think I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. Man, the 
It started out easy. Now I'm having all this trouble. Maybe I should just pack it up, throw in the towel. That's, that's wavering thoughts. The wavering thoughts are caused by, it says, driven with the wind and tossed. The wind represents spirits. Spirits attack your mind. Amen. That's the wind. To, to help you in your decision to give up. Oh, you're going to be a fool. You might as well just give up. Uh, just count your loss and, and move on. Now, God, God, uh, 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 God, God knows uh, you just didn't count the cost. Uh, follow me. Throw scripture at you. You follow me? So you got to watch out for spirits. That'll attack your mind. To bring doubt, confusion. That's the wind. And notice, you don't want to be tossed with that. People who are tossed with that, they, they, instead of doing what God says, they're doing everything else. And they, and they change every 10 minutes. Trying to make something work. Wherein God has already given you the formula to make it work. You follow? Me? Be careful to what spirit is speaking to you. He said, try the spirit. Huh? By the spirit. Amen? Didn't he say that? And what that means is, try the spirit by the spirit of the word of the Lord. Whatever a spirit is speaking, You've got to find it in the Word. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? I'm teaching them. Yeah. 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 Thank you. If, you. if you can't find it in the Word, it's not of God. So reject it. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Now notice. Notice what he said. He says, but let him ask in faith. Then verse number seven, he says, for let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. Now, he's, he's making a statement, an emphatic statement, huh? with no options in that statement. He said, if you don't ask in faith, and if you're uh, wavering, he said, let not that man think that he should receive anything from the Lord. All of God's word is built like this. It's conditional. Amen? It's conditional. It's not negotiable. No, negotiable. It's conditional. Uh, my brother and Mother Davis. Yes, I was thinking about when that condition comes, it, it, it comes to like, like, like the need to pray. Spending my time in prayer time. Right. Spending my time in prayer seeking God. Yeah. Spend more time in prayer seeking God. That conditioning, that conditioning comes, you get your answer, but you're supposed to be meditating on it. Right. Through prayer and, and, and through fasting like that. When you when you the more time you spend with God, that growth will come too. As that growth will come, the answers that you spoke that you're seeking. Will, 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 will develop, will be there. God will speak to you. Yes. <laughs> I like how he put that. Uh, uh, the answers will be there as you seek God because they're there. They're there. That's the whole purpose of seeking Him. That, that's the whole purpose. Hallelujah. And, and I like what he said spending time with Him. Yes, yeah, spend some time with Him. Amen. Mother David. Oh, I thought you had to him. All right. Amen. All right. Notice what he said. He said, let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. Amen. That's conditional. Then he's, he's, he's compounding it. He says, a double-minded person or a double-minded man is what? All, all of his actions. You see unstable folk. 
Downstairs, I wanted to shut all the water off. Shut, shut, and the, and, the, and the pipe broke. I'm, 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 I'm shut off the house. I'm like, oh my God. And it's almost service time. <laughs> so I said, Lord, help me. Lord, show me another avenue to turn that water off. I turned all the water off to the whole house. <laughs> huh? Uh, and, and came on the church. Amen. You follow? Yes. Praised and worshiped God. And, and while I was in church, you know, made some phone calls to have to go repair. Amen. Amen. You follow? I didn't curse God. Uh, didn't allow all that temptation uh, to confuse me, to stop me. Uh, think about my water bill. Uh, I'm going to be sky high. You follow? Taking my joy, taking my peace. Huh? You follow? Me? Didn't say, oh, what's the use of going to church? Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm glad I got part of the hot water. I ain't getting that blue in my shower. So I rejoiced on that. If I, if I didn't get that, then I had to take a bird back. Uh, come on to check. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I wouldn't have said nothing. Y'all wouldn't have knew nothing. I put a bunch of cologne on. <laughs> <laughs> Work it out. Yeah. Uh, Work it out. When stuff happens, life happens, you know you got a responsibility. Work it out. The enemy go to attack you. The enemy go try to stop you. Amen. But don't allow all that to stop you. Work that out. Be faithful. Faithful unto death. Am I right? Thank you, Jesus. Y'all with me? Thank you. I can tell. No, he said, double-minded person is unstable in all they ways. They are unstable because of the evil spirits that attack that they allow to counsel them. Don't allow spirits to counsel you. Amen. Amen. The majority of your thoughts are negative. That comes from uh, uh, your, your, your negative deficiency, your carnality, and it also comes from evil spirits. Bishop, that comes from um, not, not wanting to be patient. Them evil spirits. Right. Fussing and complaining. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that thinking that you know a better way. Right. And, 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 and that that them type them types of spirits. I'm um, well, well, I'm, well I'm frustrated. I'm not gonna do this. Them types of spirits. Right. Um, instead Ooh. of going down in prayer and asking God just to just to help me or going to another brother or sister that, that's solid in Christ and asking for help for them. But that's just being frustrated, wanna be by yourself, thinking that you can work things out all by yourself. That's true. You brought up another thought that just hit me like a ton of bricks. 
uh, uh, sometimes we don't do right because we say everybody else ain't doing right. Why well, I got to do right? Mm. Yeah. Well, I got to do right. Ain't nobody else doing it. Wow. Huh? That come to my mind. Ain't nobody else doing it. Why well, I got to do it? Uh, uh, Benjamin Sanderson? Um, I was thinking about this passage of scripture when, when you were saying the devil behind the man is unstable in all his ways. And I remember um, Bishop Rackett teaching a uh, message on, on, on that Bible class one night. He said, You know, the devil can't trust me to serve him wholeheartedly. <laughs> and God can't trust me to serve him wholeheartedly. You devil mind, you're going to have to get off the fence and declare whose side you want. That's right. That's right. I remember that Bible class. Wow. I remember that. Wow. Yes. That's true. He said, he said, God can't trust you, the devil can't trust you. <laughs> uh, you know you double mind when it, when, it, when it was like that. Thank you, Jesus. But it's the spirits. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't, can't you listen to all those spirits? That's why you gotta have your mind solidified in the word of God. Yes. Amen? Determine. Not making up your mind that I'm going to serve him. Determine that I'm going to serve him. Amen? Determination. Now, now, now notice the difference. I'm, I'm not making up my mind that I'm trying to serve, I'm going to serve him. But I'm determined uh, that I'm going to serve him. It means no matter what happens, I'm going to serve the Lord. Yes, sir. That's, that's when you get that scripture, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord, determined. I'm going to find a way to serve him. Amen? I'm going to seek him to serve him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right? We almost done? What verse we in? That's why I like to read. Seven? Just eight. We in eight? Yeah. Yeah, we in nine. All right, that's a whole nother thought. All right, we're going to end it right there. Thank you. I want God to help me. Amen. I know you want God to help you too. We'll pick up on that thought next week. It's offering time in the sanctuary, and those that have a desire to give online, you have to get in touch with Titus to be able to give. Give as unto them. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. In Jesus' name.